I'm Lucas, I'm the main author of this paper, Convolutional Neural Network with Inception-like Module for Ball and Goal Post Detection in a Small Humanoid Soccer Robot. So, for the introduction, uh, IT Androids is the Aeronautics Institute of Technology Robotics team. It is a contestant in the RoboCup kit size category. Kit size robots have a human-like shape with height between 40 and 90 centimeters. They must be completely autonomous. <clears throat> uh, IT Androids kit size robot is shown in figure 1. It complies with RoboCup rules. And since 2015, RoboCup rules determine a ball with at least 50% white color. This regulation has made our previous algorithms inefficient because they could not differentiate white objects properly. The main related works refer to other RoboCup contestants. It is worth noticing that eight RoboCup teams still use an Intel CPU and rely on well-known machine learning frameworks so they must adapt algorithms accordingly. Kenmuri et al. adapts a region of interest selection algorithm to feed a CNN on a CPU. Their approach, however, struggles with blurred images. The situation is common as the robots walk, images from their camera are very often unclear. Cruz et al. compares XNORnet and SqueezeNet fed with images from region proposals. Uh, they do so on a now robot with limited computer power. They achieve remarkable results, but they highlight that their algorithm needs to be retrained when robots change environment. So for our contribution, we preferred a fully convolutional approach to solve the problem because we believed it could generalize more, more cases avoiding the increased work of training a neural network during a competition setup. We chose YOLO, the you only look on algorithm, to detect objects, since it works with a single CNN pass. We had to modify the algorithm to run on a computer with limited power that is running multiple tasks during a RoboCup game. A single computer is responsible for movement, coordination, game strategy, decision-making, and locali localization. So, uh, we're going to talk about how we adapted the YOLO algorithm. Uh, YOLO is a complex algorithm to detect many objects. As our needs were simple, the algorithm could be simplified based on several assumptions. The first one is there is at most a single ball in the image, which is reasonable for a soccer game. There is at most one visible goalpost at a given time, as robots cannot see both goalposts during the game, they are located on opposite sides of the field. The robot seldom sees the complete goalpost because it is too high, so we track the goalpost's vertical support. Uh, the goalpost supports are very similar, the only way to differentiate between them is when both are present in an image. About our architectures, uh, we based our modifications of YOLO on the fast YOLO model, as it is designed for faster inferences. Our main changes were exchanging the two Philo fully connected layers for one fully collected layer implemented as a one by one convolution. The last layer of our CNN returns for each cell a five valued vector. Those values account for probability of an object's existence, the position, and its dimension. For more information on how we treat those variables, uh, please read our paper. So, uh, we stack those five valued vectors for each object we want to detect, the ball and the goalpost, and by doing so we specialize our search for only two classes of objects. We iterate over the final CNN tensor to find the cell with the highest probability of containing a ball and the two cells with the highest probability of containing a goalpost. So about our YOLO implementation, we set the maximum execution time of our vision pipeline as 25 milliseconds because it is right below the average time between two image frames. Uh, we created two 
architectures to compare, the NNX has eight layers and less filters in each layer than past YOLO. And Inception X adds an Inception-like module to NNX. This module is inspired by Google and Net. Uh, for it, improves detection with low increase in computational cost. We vary the number of filters in each layer to compare performance between architectures. Inception X is shown in this flowchart. It has two uh, convolutional layers in parallel with one 3x3 three three convolutional layer that starts uh, out the, on the bifurcation after layer 5. So for our results, we see that only the image size of 160 and 120 was suitable for our time constraints and performed better on detection. We compared all the NNX with all the Inception X architectures and found out that uh, NN3 and Inception3, our most complex networks, had the overall best results. They both have pretty similar results on every metric, so we need to break the apparent tie. Uh, Inception3 is slightly better on mean average precisions in classifications for goal post detection, and we prioritize less false positives as they are harmful to the robot software, which has a ball tracker endowed by a common filter. If a false negative occurs, the filter is still able to propagate its estimate, but a false positive deviates the estimate towards a false pole. So we chose the inception tree to use in our robot. Now for the performance analysis. Uh, when by analyzing the performance of our CNN, we saw false negatives with low object probability but correct bounding boxes when the ball was not fully contained in the image and on images with low luminosity. False positives were less frequent but appeared on luminous objects, white socks, and white objects outside the field. To mitigate those problems, we can add images from those cases on our training set and we can use the field borderlines to filter objects outside the field. Um, there is a correctly identified ball in this figure 3. Um, the goalpost detection has low IOU scores, intersection over union, but high mean average precision. We do not think that those low IOUs will harm the robot software as we only need the point of contact uh, between the goalpost and the ground. 90% of our false positives occur outside the field but they can be filtered using the borderlines and blurry images cause the algorithm not to detect some goalpost support. So, uh, at figure 4 there is a correctly identified and go post support. Uh, we sought to identify the best cost benefit of classification performance and adjust the probability threshold correctly. We built a receiver operating characteristic curve, the rock curve, to identify the probability that diminishes false positives while maintaining a high number of true positives. The probability threshold of 0 0.75, which is the red dot, on this graph is better than our empirical estimate of 0 0.3, the green dot. It decreases the false positive rate in 38% and the true positive rate in only 33.8%. But if we account for all objects, the results uh, are less expressive, but we highlight that the goal post detection is still secondary in this research. So for our conclusions. By selecting the right parameters in architectures, it is possible to run a CNN on a limited environment. A convolutional neural network with eight layers and an exception-like model has shown good performance in generalized many cases. Combined with um, Intel OpenVINO inference framework, we could run the vision pipeline in real time faster than our cameras framework. For future works, we plan to decrease the number of false positives as they are harmful to our robot software. And we'd we would like to deepen our research and go post detection and extend the algorithm to detect other objects 
on the soccer field. For acknowledgements, I would like to thank CNPT for the financial support to this research. We would like to thank our team's sponsors for the made possible building a robot and we are especially grateful uh, to Intel for guiding us on using the OpenVINO framework. These are the references cited on this presentation.